Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Funding Your Move to the Cloud, How Microsoft and AKA Enterprise Solutions Are Investing in Your Digital Transformation. My name is Petra I. Miller, Marketing and Business Development Manager here at AKA Enterprise Solutions, and I'll be moderating the presentation. Before we get started, I wanted to run through a couple of housekeeping notes. Use one monitor for the webinar. We will be showing a short video, so for that portion, if you are dialed into your phone, you'll need to unmute your speakers on your computer to hear it. If you experience any visual or audio issues, please contact GoTo at support.logmeinc.com backslash GoToWebinar backslash contact us. Lastly, if you have any issues, don't worry. This webinar is being recorded, and we will send you the recording in the next few business days. Also, I wanted to point out the questions pane of the control panel in the upper right corner of your screen. Using this functionality, you may submit questions at any time during the presentation, and we will address as many as possible during the Q&A session at the end of the call. If we don't get to your question, we will follow up with you after the presentation. Today's session will be presented by Greg Inks, Cloud Practice Lead at AK Enterprise Solutions. Greg has been with AK for almost two years, but has spent over two decades specializing in Microsoft and Azure platforms. Outside of work, Greg is a true Renaissance man. He enjoys making everything from furniture, soap, computers, and cars all by hand. In terms of what we'll cover today, we'll start with a quick introduction about AKA, including a short client visit testimonial. Next, we'll go through what's your cloud maturity, followed by AKA offers and Microsoft incentives available to you. We'll finish up with Q&A and next steps. Most of you on the call are already AKA customers, but for those who aren't or perhaps aren't aware of all of our services, we wanted to start with a quick about AKA overview. For over 25 years, AK Enterprise Solutions has been dedicated to making it easier for clients to do business by using technology to simplify processes and reduce risks. Specializing in Microsoft Dynamics 365, cloud services, business process consulting, and custom application development, we combine industry and technical experience to help organizations achieve their goals. To kick off our cloud discussion, we'd like to share a two-minute video in which three of our clients, McHenry County, Illinois, CapTrust, and LifeWorks, talk about their cloud journey. For the video, we have a few technical recommendations. Use one monitor for the webinar. If you are dialed in through your phone, unmute your computer speakers to hear the video sound. Lastly, be sure to select window mode, the square below your microphone in the control panel, as sometimes full screen will not display the video portion. Everything shows that the industry are going to the cloud very rapidly and we decided it was time for McHenry County to do the same thing. IT organizations struggle with providing the functionality that people expect today, and the only way to do that is through leveraging cloud applications. One of the most difficult questions facing our organization was whether or not we were comfortable having our mission-critical application run in the cloud. In Microsoft's case, the evidence is there. Microsoft US East data center has double, triple, quadruple redundancy. They're running millions of mailboxes and they're doing a good job of protecting that data and making sure only authorized users can get into it. Protecting our data is the biggest thing we do. That's what we are. We're stewards of information. And Microsoft's cloud is more secure than we as a county could ever be. The top benefits for us with respect to the cloud are cost and access. Not having to maintain the local servers, both from a hardware and a software standpoint, is very beneficial to us. But just as beneficial is the capability for our associates to be able to access their email, their data, anywhere they might have internet access. We recently were on the outskirts of Hurricane Harvey and our main site lost power a number of times through a three-day period, but our email, our data was all intact and our employees were all able to continue to work whether they were here at work or at home. We are a very complex organization and AKA understands that. This is where the future is going to be and it was comfortable to move with a company like AKA and Microsoft to help our policymakers service our residents better. Our business is growing so rapidly, running in the cloud is going to change cap trust for the positive. The promise of this direction for LifeWorks is tremendous. This is a business solution that will help all of us get better. Now I'd like to hand it off to our presenter, Greg Inks. Greg? 
Thank you very much, Petra. Good afternoon, everybody, and, and thank you for uh, joining us as we kind of go through our cloud practice and some of the offers and incentives that we have uh, to present to you today. First off, I wanted to start off with a little bit of a dialogue talking to you about cloud maturity and, and help sort of set the stage for the way that we're approaching uh, all of our offers and incentives uh, to move into the cloud and how to take advantage of cloud technology. But before we jump into sort of the, ma the maturity curve type of discussion, I wanted to set the stage a little bit and plant a couple of key questions that I hope that you'll um, keep in the back of your mind and see if you can find answers to as we go through the presentation. Specifically in context for your company organization, um, have you thought about what your business continuity or disaster recovery plan is? I know that seems like a fairly uh, easy and straightforward question, but you'd be surprised at the number of answers that we receive whenever we ask somebody, one of our customers or one of our, our organizations, you know, what are they going to do when the next hurricane hits? Uh, being that I live in North Carolina, this, this past week has been you know, intentionally very difficult for me and my family, but without uh, technology such as the cloud, I might not be able to stand here and give this presentation to you today. Whereas uh, now with leveraging things like Azure and the Office Productivity Suite from Microsoft, I'm able to take this phone call, produce this webinar, and, and go through this material with you in a remote location. Second is, what would you do or how could you help your employees or your uh, uh, team members be more productive? Are there things that, that would make them feel more impactful or have them be more impactful to your organization? Uh, would being able to be remote and working from a remote location but still in a secured manner, meeting your IT guidelines and policies, be something that would further your organization? Next, if you're talking about return on investment, um, did you get the return on investment in the hardware that you've invested in previously? Many organizations find that they have to oversize their spend on infrastructure to be able to handle peaks and valleys that comes along with just running systems on a day-to-day -day basis and oftentimes have to order twice the amount of hardware than they necessarily need, where something like a cloud solution has that elastic compute that maybe could help you rein in some of those unwanted costs. Next. Do you have the skills to operate the cloud in your own organization? Do you need some help? Can a company like Microsoft or AKA either help you learn how to use the cloud or take over certain aspects of your operation to make things easier for you? Or is it really just advice and guidance that you're looking for? What makes the most sense as you start to move into the cloud? But last but not least, have you been have you budgeted for your digital transformation? You know, there's there's a lot of buzzwords and a lot of uh, pressure out there about transforming organizations to be more digital. But what does that mean? What is it going to cost? Uh, what is a digital transformation in the context of what you need for your organization? So these are some of the questions I'd like for you to kind of keep in the back of your mind as we go through this. But just to really jump into it, where are you in the cloud? The cloud means so many different things to so many different people and organizations, ranging anywhere from simple things like infrastructure hosted somewhere else, that tends to be more of an IT point of view, to something that might be more business system impactful. Do you have a CRM system or an ERP system? Are you using those systems to maintain uh, your, your data when it comes to your customers or your citizens? Is that data made available in the cloud or is it running locally and how do you make all that work? Digital marketing, are you advertising and running a website? Chances are every organization and every entity at some point has some form of a website. Where are you hosting that? Are you ever kept up at night whether or not uh, that, that website's going to go down because of a natural disaster or an ad that you're about to run on the Super Bowl? So as you start to think about it, there's really a lot of complexity when it comes to the cloud. But when we talk about it from an industry or a Microsoft point of view, we can start to make some sense out of the chaos a little bit and group things up into buckets. The first bucket would be infrastructure hosting. That's the easiest and, and most IT-centric way of looking at the cloud is shifting workloads and electronic systems, business systems into a different hosting arrangement where you and your organization aren't necessarily responsible for it. But next, as you move past infrastructure, the next thing that most companies start to think about is office productivity. You know, where am I hosting my email? Do I have a document management system? What am I using for telephony? Am I using a VoIP-based system? Is that VoIP-based system being supplied to me from a local telecom provider, or should I be looking at something like a Microsoft Skype for Business, where I can take advantage of telephony solutions in the cloud? 
as we move past office productivity, the next area is, is an area of cloud that is becoming rapidly one of the most game-changing for organizations, and that's what we call platform as a service. These are things where you can start to leverage the cloud to develop entire business systems where there is no uh, hardware or infrastructure that you're responsible for, or said differently, serverless technology. If you think about some of the other companies that have come up in the last five years, like Uber as an example, Uber based their entire business model and their entire organization on not having a single server and developed a cloud native application and quite frankly, a cloud native business completely in this type of technology. As we get out of the technology space and start getting more towards business impactfulness and being able to affect things like your operations of your organization, your financial health, or even just serving your base needs for your, for your company, we start looking at business systems in the cloud. Many providers exist these days that are offering some form of a business application in the cloud, many of which you're probably already taken of today. Um, obviously, we're spe specifically discussing Microsoft today, but the one nice thing about Microsoft is that if you take advantage of one of their business systems or some of their other portions of the cloud, interoperability between all of the cloud providers becomes a much more seamless interaction for you as you move further into the cloud. Last but not least, the area that's got the most excitement and the most enthusiasm behind it in, in uh, areas of investment is what we call artificial intelligence, cloud services, and analytics. This is an area where only the cloud can give you the type of scale and compute that you could use to be able to accomplish these types of things. Start, said more differently, if you really think about data, anal data analytics, in the past you have to have some form of a large investment in a data warehouse that you're storing in, in a server farm sitting on premise, and if you wanna make heads or tails out of the data, you have to have some really smart data engineers to go and create cubes and dimensions for you, write a report, you finally see the report and go, well, gee, that wasn't what I wanted in the first place. Whereas when we start talking about the cloud, the need for that amount of control and structure to design this system starts to fall away because the cloud just simply scales up, does the cranky calculation that it needed to, spits out an answer, you can say, oh, right, that's what I want, replicate this, guys. As we start to say, well, what does that mean for us? Where are we on the maturity curve? Where's the rest of, of uh, organizations similar to us? This is some data that I took from Forbes, um, and the data is a little bit dated, but not too far. I think it's only off by about uh, two months or so. This gives you a rough idea of where are most companies as of today when it comes to the cloud. Certainly, you would expect to see a tremendous shift toward the left, which is more of your IT-centric types of solutions. These are the data centers, the lift and shift, the disaster recoveries, the, hey, help me better streamline my costs and my effectiveness in using my, my investment in hardware, shift to where that doesn't make any sense, help me enable my employees and become a little bit more uh, business product productive using office productivity suites. About 85% of enterprises at this point have some footprint in, in one of those two spaces, either through infrastructure or business productivity. But as we start to go towards the cloud native, you can see that that uh, percentage of, of enterprises that have taken advantage of this technology drop drastically. Why is that? Well, it's hard for a lot of companies to figure out ways to, to move beyond their traditional server sitting on the floor. How do you build applications that run in a serverless way? What does that mean for us as an organization where we give up some of the control over the infrastructure? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? And it starts to can cause some uh, companies some concern there. On the other hand, as we move toward the business applications, it's interesting to see that the, that the uptick in companies embracing these business applications is accelerating fast. Many companies are finding that, hey, if I can just outsource hosting, software, infrastructure, the application, and just use it to get my business going, it's a real, real good investment and, and a wise, wise decision for companies. And then last but not least, those advanced cloud services, those are taking off really quickly. So what does that all mean for us as we kind of go through this conversation? Well, it means that we have to be looking at two big factors, cost and compliance. Um, I can't think of a single organization that I've talked to where the two conversation pieces around cost and compliance hasn't come up when you're having a discussion around the cloud. A couple of things to think about here is that the cloud doesn't have to be a scary proposition from a cost or a compliance point of view. And in many ways, it can actually help 
uh, get you over some of those hurdles. Uh, for those of you that may or may not have heard, uh, we're nearing end of life and end of support for a couple of core products that 80 to 95 percent of, in, of enterprises are currently built on, which is Windows Server 2000, uh, what is that, 2008 and uh, SQL Server 2008. Both of those products are nearing end of support, which means you're gonna have an event coming very quickly. We're gonna have to look for upgrades or shifting of technology to stay compliant and to, and to stay supported by Microsoft. There are investments that we're gonna cover off of uh, here in a few minutes where Microsoft is making that a little bit easier for you to swallow by helping incentivize partners to do these services for you and really being a partner and trying to help, set, help, help offset some of those costs. So with that, why don't we jump into some of the offers of how we can accomplish some of those areas of the cloud and how we can get you accelerated in your digital transformation. So the first thing that we want to talk about is, all right, that was really confusing. There's so many cloud services out there. What should we do? Uh, if you don't really have a thought or a roadmap or an understanding of where your organization is postured for the cloud, this is the offer, this is the, the package that AKA and Microsoft would say you need to start with. It's our cloud assessment and strategy roadmap. So what is it? Well, at its most basic, in its most simplistic terms, it is an assessment um, where we would look at your existing topography, your existing infrastructure, your existing business systems, and give you a real true understanding of where do those things sit in their applicability and readiness to move into the cloud or to take on cloud technology. But what we try to do a little different than what I'd say a lot of our competitors are, is before we just hand you over the big inventory spreadsheet that contains all this data, actually make some heads or tails out of it. Provide the recommendations on, does it make sense for your business? You know, if you've just invested a tremendous amount of money in infrastructure, it may not be time to retire that infrastructure and it's not in your best interest to do so on a return on investment cost analysis. So we at AKA spend a little bit more time doing that sort of ROI type of comprehensive cost analysis about what the output comes from this, along with you to plan out what is that ROI calculation and what is the roadmap and timing for doing this type of transition? What's in it for you? An accurate picture on costs. It is very difficult to go from a model where you know exactly how much a server costs sitting on your floor to something that's more of a consumption model when you get in the cloud. And with this type of roadmap and, and cost analysis assessment that we would provide, you'll actually have a very, very concrete idea of what would it cost on a monthly basis or a yearly basis to operate in the cloud. Next slide. The way that we package this is we, we offer it in sort of three flavors. I would call it simple, medium, and complex. And that's what you see here on the picture uh, presented to you on the screen. In a simple one of these cloud assessments, we do exactly that. We come in, we do the assessment, we perform the analysis, we gather up all the inventory of material, uh, we conduct a few very key and important workshops and provide that information over to you so that you know, all right, this is what we need to do from a technology point of view. And we stop there. Versus if we go to the far right, our tier three or our complex style, this is where we'll go through and we'll do a full ROI calculation. We'll take your existing on-premise infrastructure and, and business applications and figure out exactly how much money are you spending on a monthly basis and compare that to not only Azure, but maybe even AWS or even Google. Now, what that means is you can feel very comfortable and confident that you're making the right decisions just from a pure unemotional cost standpoint of what your environment looks like on-prem versus the cloud providers and that you know that Microsoft's got your back and this is the right way to look at it. So what are kind of the investments that are coming into this? Microsoft is investing in software and automation assessment technology. Or said differently, Microsoft is actually giving to partners and subsidizing to customers the ability to do this with technology to help provide the answers. So we're not going out and securing licenses or rolling our own software to do this type of stuff. Microsoft is helping us with that. They're also helping us with funding. Um, they're very incentivized to enable partners, to enable customers to take advantage of the cloud, and that comes in the form of direct funding. 
So for, uh, depending upon, and we'll cover all of this as we go a little bit further, depending upon the type of workload, Microsoft will drastically offset, if not help really compensate for those types of assessments. But if the assessment doesn't even make any sense, they're ready to stand next to us and come up with you know, some proof of concepts, they're willing to get some workshops going, bring you and, and us into one of their uh, technology centers, do some whiteboarding, and really make sure that you're comfortable with the decision before you even take one step forward. AKA's investments are really around uh, the, the roadmap technology and our IP for how we've put together these types of cost models. So rather than trying to uh, to, to upsell or upskill this type of a thing for you, we're actually including it in the offer and, and reducing the cost. Next slide. So what does that look like? Typically, if we're talking about these types of cloud assessments and roadmaps, the prices that you see there are sort of for that tier one, two, and three. So typically, most customers that are just starting off with a raw assessment is about a $5,000 project. For those others that are looking for that real tailored ROI and roadmap all the way up to 15K. But with Microsoft's incentives, we can start cutting those prices down pretty significantly. Now, I didn't get down to the dollar and cent on here because obviously the answer always changes depending upon how much you want us to go do and how much you have in your existing pipeline. But this can give you a real rough idea of, of where we can get at to be able to produce that type of ROI and assessment for you. All right, next. So let's assume that now we've made the decision. We understand what our footprint looks like. We know what our roadmap needs to be. We've got an assessment. We know what our workloads look like. Now what? How do we get started? You know, it's, it's one thing to go out and buy uh, uh, Dynamics and have CRM ready to go. It's another thing to say, I'm ready to start doing a hybrid data center. I'm ready to move into the cloud. So what is the way you get there? Well, we have this offering called Cloud Essentials. And for lack of a better word, what this is is really your foundations in the cloud. So think taking your existing data center and extending it up into Azure and building a data center in the sky along with what you have on premise. Or maybe you don't want to do that because it's too risky, but you want to create a little island up in the sky in a secured way and move some servers up there. Maybe it's a dev test type of thing. Whatever the reason or whatever the goal is, you, you ultimately need to get your networking right. You need to get your security posture correct. You need to look at things like how are you going to manage your resources in the cloud? What's your identity management strategy? How are you going to handle your reporting and your, your analytics for what you're consuming and what you're spending? And how do you build those ITIL processes in the cloud? Because, you know, doing ITIL on premise, that's a pretty uh, straightforward thing that we've all been doing for the last 30, 40 years. But now with the introduction of the cloud and where we don't physically own the data center, how do we build those same processes so we can feel secure and comfortable and actually have a data center operating in, in Microsoft and in Azure? So from a Cloud Essentials point of view, on the next slide, what we're going to cover off on is very similar to what you saw with the Cloud Assessment. We offer this, and again, a simple, medium, and complex. We're trying to make this real easy for, for customers to understand where we're going with this and make sure that there's no surprises in the pricing. In our simple version of a Cloud Essentials offer, we do literally just the engineering work to go get this thing done. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking with you about what's your future growth strategy, how do you want to handle resource management, do you need an advanced amount of analytics to look at the way that you're spending, do you want to figure out ways to split charges. What we're really going to do in a simple is go get it built. Set up the networking, set up the virtual private networks, look at whether or not you, a VPN is good enough or you need an express route connection for a fiber-based connection to Azure. What's your networking? On the flip side, you go to the full extent all the way to the far right. The goal to come out of that uh, complex cloud essentials, again, is that full ITIL shop, ready to go type of environment running in Azure. So that ultimately, you just need to start lifting servers up or, or installing websites and all those processes, tooling, and, and, and software is already in place for you. Next slide. So the investments here are a little bit different because this is a little bit more concrete. This is delivery. This is getting into the cloud and starting to, to activate your Azure and start to spend money on subscriptions. So from that perspective then, AK and Microsoft can, can invest in this a little bit more directly because it's a little bit more concrete. Um, specifically, Microsoft is looking at ways to help 
speed up the process of moving into the cloud. They have an entire fast track process with suites of dedicated individuals that are cloud solution architects that are there to help accelerate getting you in the cloud. So let's say that you decide you do need a fiber connection into Azure for speed and security sake. You don't have to worry, you know, how do we figure out all this stuff? They have an entire fast track team that's available to help accelerate that and make sure that those connection pieces are done in place. And obviously, AKA is there with you to help make sure it all gets done. But they also are providing funding to AKA to help get this set up for you. Um, they're incentivized to help make sure it's done right from the beginning because it helps secure the environment for other customers and all of Azure, but it also helps to get you positioned really well for success. AKA is obviously going to supply engineering expertise such as myself. Uh, we have an entire team of dedicated individuals that have really lived through the pains of the early days of the cloud um, and understand exactly where the real gotchas are and where the, where the potholes are. From a, from a funding and investment point of view from Microsoft, everything that they're, that they're really focused on, and this is a generalization, is based on consumption. So the more we can get an accurate picture from Microsoft on what you think that you will be spending once you're getting up in the cloud, directly translates to how much investment funding they're willing to give to a partner to go do the work for you. So as you can kind of see from this little slide right here, as an example, if we think that you're going to spend about $1,500 a month worth of, of Azure, be it virtual machines or SQL databases or networking or whatever the cost may be, they're willing to supply a partner like AKA specifically $5,000 towards just doing the execution work for you. Next slide. So what does this offer cost to get you set up and running in the cloud without any of the incentives of the discounts that I was just mentioning? This is what the typical charge and feel looks like for this type of work. Uh, so if you were to go and just say, get me the bare bones minimum, that typically feels like a $10,000 project. If you're going to the full soup to, soup to the end, uh, ITIL style processes where you're really just maintaining your existing IT department and switching where the hosting's at, that would be more in the $20,000 kind of camp. But with Microsoft's incentives, we're actually able to slash that pretty significantly. So again, if we think that there's a good chance that you, when you're all said and done and are up and running with the infrastructure and hardware you're going to be up there, let's say that you are going to be spending at about $3,000 a month. They're going to be willing to supply AKA up to $10,000 towards your migration and your cloud essentials, which means we could end up doing this work for you for free. So let that sink in for a moment. If you really are serious about getting into the cloud and you're looking for a way to accelerate your, your, your speed to getting there, this is a great way to take advantage of it and have all the legwork done on your behalf. Okay, so now we've got the essentials stood up. We've got the network there. We've got the cloud ready to go. We've got our billing set up. We've got our identity secure. We feel real good about the data center we just built in the cloud. Now what? Well, the first offer that we've got to share with you is what we call our high availability and disaster recovery. This is probably one of the easiest ways to reap some immediate benefits from Azure uh, right from day one without a large forecasted cost on your, on your part. Let's say that you do have a couple of systems on premise. You really are not ready to move those into the cloud uh, for whatever reason hardware, application, speed, sensitivity, or you just want to dip your toe in the cloud, you're not ready to take things off, off your on-premise data center. But you don't necessarily have to go all the way to a full-blown production system. You could just start off with a disaster recovery environment. And said differently, a backup, a full running replica of your existing production systems running up in Azure, but shut off, turned down not currently spending money or charging, an insurance policy, if you will. That's what this offering is all about. It's for us to help you get a replica, an insurance policy for, for business continuity up into Azure. So should the next hurricane come to your town and force you to have to evacuate, you don't have to worry about well, what does that mean for my business? We can simply start to flip on the switches and activate everything up in the cloud and your full replica of production is up and operating for you at a moment's notice. So that's what's in it for you. True high availability or true disaster recovery in the cloud in a very cost effective way. And for us, it really doesn't matter what technology it is, um, whether it's SQL, or excuse me, Windows Server or it's open source. For us and for Microsoft, it's all the same tech. 
Um, if you weren't already aware, Microsoft is a very different organization now, and open source is actually quickly becoming the number one word that is being used around, around the technology campfires. It's so much easier to run a Linux environment these days, believe it or not, than it is a Windows Server environment, but that doesn't matter. We got you covered. Both sets of technology operate in Azure very effectively. Next slide. So again, the investments are fairly similar here. Uh, they're, they're looking at helping ways to get you interested and get you ready to use the cloud. Uh, Microsoft is going to invest in some some upfront subscription costs, you know, some discounts, and say, right, let's let's let you try Azure before you buy full time, and get you some some early usage for a month or two worth of Azure consumption. That way, you can test it out, kick kick the tires, so to speak. They're also supplying uh, incentive funding to partners to help with POCs. Uh, they're also supplying a lot of expertise so that if you do have a complicated scenario uh, for a disaster recovery that you're not entirely sure how to do, maybe you've got a, a mean response time of less than five minutes and you're saying, how do I do an RTO that low? How can I make that work? AKA and Microsoft will partner together to figure out the right way to engineer the solution for you. And that's really what AKA is bringing in is a lot of our automation software, a lot of our recipe cookbooks and reference models for the solutions that we've done in the past to be able to enable that to get into the cloud in a cheap, cost-effective way. So then in terms of pricing, this is really straightforward. We're trying to price this so that it's easy for you to calculate what's this going to cost me. So I'm literally throwing the rate card out there. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to get yelled at <laughs> by some of the, the, the executives in the firm, but I wanted you to see how transparent we and Microsoft are trying to be with the way that we're pricing this. We're charging it per instance of a thing to move into the cloud. So let's say that you, know, you, you just have uh, a, a quick set of, of VMs that you want to move in the cloud. Let's say that you're moving I don't know, five or 10 VMs. You can quickly do the calculation of what's that going to cost, five times a thousand, five thousand dollars and it's done. Um, depending upon whether or not you're an AKA managed customer, we do have some discounts and some levers that we can do to even further offset the prices. And what that means is if you want us to be your IT department running cloud workloads. So we have incentives for ourselves to be able to go and run that workload on your behalf and set up the way that we're comfortable with. So if we get to do that, then we're going to lower the price to be able to get those things set up for you on your behalf. But wait, there's more. So if you take this example uh, and we say, okay, we can determine that you're going to be spending about 1500 bucks a month. Uh, so that's, you know, roughly three to five servers. If we think you're going to be running three to five servers up in Azure and we can prove that to Microsoft, Microsoft will turn around and give us the $5,000 it costs to do the migration to get those things set up on your behalf, which really means if you were moving those five servers, you just got them done with DR set up in the cloud again for free. So it's, it's really all about how do we get that, that workload up and running and get you taking advantage of it because there's a, a, good, F, a good amount of investment in both what Microsoft has to bring to the table as well as AK to get you up and running. Next slide. So that was the DR story. Lift and shift is not much different. So while disaster recovery is leaving your systems on premise and activating disaster recovery versions of your application in the cloud, lift and shift is only slightly different in that this is actually lifting the workloads live real time so that on day N, they're in your environment. On day N plus one, they're running in Azure with no lag or no overlap or no drop in service, if you will. So we lift and shift any of your environments out of your data centers up into Azure and we make sure that we keep those production systems up and running and replicating into Azure until everything's there. So if you've got terabytes and terabytes of data and you can't afford to be offline for two weeks, you don't have to worry about that because these systems are replicating and getting things up and running for you without losing any data. So that way when we're done and everything's there and we're ready to flip the switch, we're literally just cutting some DNS entries over or we're switching some networking around the systems are already there and in place. What's in it for you? Pay for what you use infrastructure. Cannot emphasize this enough. If you have oversized your infrastructure on premise, once you get up into Azure, you can right size that infrastructure and reduce your footprint. So if you had to size, if your IT department had to build this stuff with five servers and, and 
you know, 32 cores a piece, and that was way overkill because you were just really concerned about some spikes, but you're actually only using eight cores on three servers. We can make those adjustments in Azure, and it becomes configuration, not redeployment. Next slide. Same thing. Uh, it doesn't matter what technology you're using. Uh, if it's open source or if it's Microsoft technology, all of this works up in Azure. We can even go to the fullest extent of helping you migrate SAP. If you were an SAP shop and you had SAP running on premise and you're trying to get out from underneath that infrastructure investment, SAP runs in Azure as a first class citizen. There's even dedicated specialized hardware that SAP partnered with Microsoft to go develop in Azure just for that technology alone. So you can be really rest assured that any type of technology or workload that you have will go up. Next slide. So again, same type of investments as with the DR. Uh, it's funding, POCs, pilots, migrations, all those things have financial incentives that Microsoft will pay the partner on behalf of the customer to get the work done. And we're gonna bring to you the best that we've got with all of the automation and the engineers that we have, as well as the, the reductions in cost and service to bring this to you in a, in a very efficient manner. So pricing, similar to what we did with the HADR, again, rate card based. So you can see sort of, and you guys will get copies of all of these slides, so don't worry if, you, if you're not able to jot everything down, we'll make sure that you, that you actually do get these rate cards. They're, I'm not trying to hide this from you. Um, you can see sort of that grid down there and it shows you what the rough prices look like. We're pricing this per virtual machine or per database or per thing that we're moving. So if you have, a, have an Oracle database that you want to move up into Azure and get it converted up to SQL, it's a rate card. It's a, it's a times number of databases. If you've got 10 virtual machines or you have three systems, all of this is going to fall on a very predictable rate card that should we get that assessment done and know exactly the number of widgets that you have, the number of, uh, of machines, the number of systems, we can drive out what that calculated price looks like really, really quickly. And you can see here, depending upon what that workload looks like and how much we can forecast and spend, we could literally shift you completely into the cloud and in some situations, do it for free. And you have your entire system migrated to Azure without any major investments in your own, in your own data center or your own people to get it done. All right, now let's talk about the next one. This is one that I'm pretty excited about. Um, Many of our customers are Great Plains customers um, and have been using GP for a long time uh, and are not ready to get off of it, but they're still running it on premise. Maybe they're running it on data technology. Maybe you've got an older version of GP and you're saying to yourself, you know, why can't they put GP in the cloud? Guess what? We can. GP is one of the workloads that AKA specializes. We are one of the few uh, Microsoft partners where this is really bread and butter for us. Uh, we have moved and have created and installed and configured and migrated and upgraded so many different GP systems that this is really where we've specialized a lot of our IP and have a tremendous amount of investment from the way that we conduct business in. For Microsoft, it's very much the same thing. You know, we want to help and AK wants to help give you that one throat to choke. Now, how do you get your GP up there? Well, if, if it's up running in Azure and AKA did it and we're your managed, your managed partner for this and Microsoft's there, you literally get to hold AKA accountable for your entire GP installation. So in other words, it becomes software as a service for you. If you've dreamed about using Dynamics 365 for, for ops, but you're not quite ready to make that jump, we can make GP become that for you through, our, through this, this offer and this technology. So what is in this GP migration and these managed services? Again, it's, it's really the entire Dynamics GP running in the cloud. All of the advantages of a software as a service model for you, down to the point where upgrades are included, patch management is there, application support is made available to you. Uh, we will white glove for all of your employees, usernames and passwords, user provisioning. We can even go to the full extent of doing all the licensing for you. So in other words, if you, if you don't have GP licenses and you've been renting them or leasing them, we can turn around and supply those. If you have your own GP licenses, bring them with you. If you have your own SQL license, bring them with you. That just helps offset the monthly spend on GP, but it'd be treated and operate just like it's a managed service with a, as a platform 
similar to like a dynamics. Next slide. So what's the investment? Uh, again, Microsoft replicating on-prem systems to the cloud, helping us with that technology to streamline and expedite that move, and paying for us to do your migration. Uh, just like we were talking about earlier with some of the other slides around lift and shift and disaster recovery, they're really, Microsoft is really incentivized to get partners to get you moving, to get you taking advantage of this type of stuff. And then obviously, AKA has a tremendous amount invested in our software and IP for, for around Great Plains. So here is the graphic that shows you roughly what this type of price looks like both from the migration one-time costs as well as the monthly costs. You can see there in that middle column on, that, on the table graphic, I went ahead, and go, went ahead and crossed all that out because we already know from experience, if we move your GP up there, Microsoft will pay for us to do that on your behalf. In other words, we can move your Great Plains up into Azure and it doesn't cost you anything. All you need to do then is, is work with us to size and shape it appropriately so that way we keep the monthly costs to where they need to be and you can get a rough idea of based on the number of users, what does that monthly recurring cost tend to look like for GP running in the cloud? That'll give you a bit of a flavor. Now this one does require a little bit more fine tuning. I'd love to just give you a straight rate card for this one, but because there's so many moving parts in the GP installation, I wanted to give you some ranges, but we can arrive at what the true pricing for that after we speak with you a little bit and tell you, or you tell us exactly what your current situation is. But some of the things that change that, again, are gonna be whether or not you have existing licensing that you're bringing with you, that helps offset some of the costs, whether or not you have uh, Windows licensing, SQL Server licensing that we're going to take with, with uh, porting up into the cloud and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, another example of if you're really interested and this is something that you've been considering, now's the time to take advantage of it while the funding's available. Next, migrating to Office 365. Um, it's surprising that while there's so many enterprises that are already taking advantage of some form of, of business pr productivity in the cloud, Many customers still have not yet migrated. Well, AKA is here to help. We can help you migrate into Office 365 in a pretty straightforward fashion. Uh, we do migrations of emails and documents almost on a daily basis, where we can take just about any email system that you're currently using and migrate your user's mailbox into Office 365, even if you're using Lotus Notes. Uh, any technology that you've got, with the exception of like two that I can think of, and even in those two, I can probably work with Microsoft to figure a way around it. We can migrate your email up into Office 365 very seamlessly so that when your employee goes home on, at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday, or excuse me, 5 o'clock on a Tuesday, by the time they're back in at 7.30 on a Wednesday, their email is up and running in Office 365 and they never even skip a beat. But we can also do documents. So whether it's personal documents or it's corporate network shares. If you've got a large investment in file share servers and you're looking for a way to kind of get that up there, we can move and migrate all of that for you. What's in it for you? Really, this is one of the larger people-based digital transformations you could ever imagine. Taking a person's environment from where they have to be in the office, physically connected to the LAN to access a file share, to now where I can operate from any device, from any technology, as long as I've got a data connection, and securely and controlling where your IT department knows everything that I'm doing, access all of my documents, all of my applications, office, my email, my, my personal documents, my shared documents, my telephony solutions, all of that. That's what's packaged up inside of this offer. So really being able to get you that, that true digital transformation per employee. But it also gives you predictable costs for your employees. We can tell you exactly how much money per month, per person, for what they need to use, it's gonna cost. And it's not one size fits all. It can be tailored. So you can have, some employees that are just using email, some employees that are just using office, some people that are just needing remote support, some people that are just looking for downloading PowerPoint, Word, and Excel onto a local machines. We can tailor that digital transformation to your needs uh, through, this, through this offering and with some of Microsoft's support. Next slide. So the investments here are really around uh, a large degree of of software and funds from Microsoft. In other words, 
this is where we would spend time with Microsoft and one of the technology centers to look at what is your true digital transformation to look, need to look like. Is it just office or is it also devices, laptops, telephones, mobile devices? Is it screen sharing technology? Is it whiteboarding technology? Microsoft will come in, sit down with all of us. We can go into the MTC and really live a day in the life in, in the modern workplace and see what that looks like for you. Um, from an AKA perspective, we have discounts and, and offers that we're willing to, to provide for, again, those that want us to be your Office 365 administrators. So we have a number of customers where we are their office admins and we are running security, we're running uh, detection, we're able to produce reports that say, you know, here's how many times these sensitive documents have been accessed by these individuals. We can put in predictive security in place. There's a number of aspects that we can go over and, and walk through with you to tailor your Office 365 experience to meet the needs of your employees. From a costing perspective, um, it's a fairly straightforward calc. I gave you guys a quick sample here that, that you see on the screen with some ranges to kind of get you a little bit of an idea of what do the costs look like, both from a one-time migration cost versus a monthly spend to kind of get the stuff together. I'm not gonna drain this graphic because it's a little bit hard to, to fully comprehend and appreciate, but let's say that you're looking to do some, some uh, migration of mailboxes and you've got, you know, uh, 11 to 25 employees, that's around $65 per person to move their mailboxes up into Azure to get it all configured inside of Office 365 and get up and running. On a monthly basis, you can see sort of what the price looks like per user. So let's say that you're only interested in the, the prime four of Office uh, in Office 365 plus email. You only want an, an E3 subscription. You can see right there an E3 subscription per employee costs around $20 a month. If you want AKA to be your managed partner, you can see what some of those prices look like. But the real kicker here is that if we're doing all of this and we're getting you set up into Office and we're setting up Active Directory and we're getting your identity management put in place, Microsoft is gonna incentivize us to do that and they're gonna give us almost the full coverage of your migration costs. So if, if you're thinking, Office is something you want to be on, Office 365, but you're not willing to bite the bullet and because and, it can be expensive and scary if you don't know what you're doing. Microsoft and AKA will move your office to the cloud on your behalf and you won't have any migration costs. It'll simply be start paying your monthly, your monthly subscriptions. So that's regardless of how much email you have, regardless of how many documents you have, from our perspective, that just elongates the timeline for how long it takes to replicate things but from a migration, it would be covered. Next slide. So that's really the, the core incentives and core offers that I had that I wanted to present you today. I hope you get some of the excitement and enthusiasm from me that I'm trying to share with you. This is really a brilliant time to be involved in this where, where Microsoft and, and AK are very dedicated and very much um, empowered to help you enable your digital transformation. But I wanted to circle back real quick and see did you catch some things that we were talking about here as you were thinking about those five questions? So the first one that we started off the top of the call was, you know, what's your, what's your business continuity or disaster recovery plan? Have you figured it out? Well, if it's on a user basis and you're talking about individuals, the modern workplace in Office 365 is how you solve that problem. Um, quick anecdote, I uh, lost a laptop once, uh, relatively recently, just before a customer presentation, I was worrying and I was freaked out, what am I gonna do? Didn't matter, all of my data on my laptop was backed up to Office 365. I used my iPhone to conduct the, the demo and the presentation to my customer. That's the power of that business continuity when it comes to the software. But on the technology side, from a data centers, you know, Azure and AKA, our disaster recovery to back up your systems in Azure will make sure that you can survive the next hurricane and not lose anything from a business perspective. Can you help make your employees more pr productive? And, and is there things that you could do that, that stop those limitations? Again, yes, that's where Azure and Office 365 come into play. We have the technology to get you up there and we can help you, if not completely cover, come close to covering your migration costs. Get your users up and running where they don't have uh, the same type of constraints. Are you gonna get the return on investment in your hardware? You know, this one is, is always gonna be tricky. If you just bought a bunch of hardware, 
maybe it's not the right time to be looking at a hardware listing shift. It pains me to say that, but it might not make sense for you. But on the other hand, if you're sitting there in the next six months and you have to buy new hardware, stop, please give us a call. Let us at least do an ROI calc for you and make sure that you really should go buy that new hardware. Don't, I don't hate for you to go and spend that money only to turn around and regret the decision. If your staff doesn't have all of the skills or just needs some brush up or some help, you know, outside of these offers, AKA can do that too. Obviously you heard me talk a little bit about our assessment and our strategy roadmap. We really want to help you get what that, that ROI is going to look like in the cloud and really prepare you with a roadmap and figure out exactly what makes the most sense for you. But if it really just comes down to you need some expertise, you need some quick wins, some quick help. Hey, we got everything else done, but we couldn't figure out X. Give us a call. Um, we're, we're not we're not too humble to help you with even just the smaller things. If it's just enabling your staff to understand how can they take advantage of Azure DevOps, we can help you with that. Visual Studio Online and Azure DevOps IT processes. Last but not least, have you budgeted for your digital transportation or digital transportation? Digital transformation. Um, you know, you, you may or may not have, but with these offers and these incentives. It'll become to the point where maybe you don't need, didn't even need to, um, and maybe we can do all these migrations for you without it actually costing you anything. Mm -hmm. Next slide. I was going to say I'll jump in here now, Greg. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, we'd like to open it up to any questions you might have. We have a few minutes left. Um, so as a reminder, you can still submit your questions through the questions pane on the right-hand side of your screen uh, if you want to type them right in there. In the meantime, you can take a look at the call to action we have here on the screen. Uh, just a reminder that funding for these offers is limited, so please reach out to your customer success manager to schedule a cloud discovery call to understand what incentives your organization could qualify for. Uh, the contact information for the customer success managers are right up there on the screen. If you don't know who your customer success manager is, you can reach out to me directly. That's Petra I. Miller. That's uh, P-E-I-M-I-L-L-E-R at A-K-A-E-S.com. Leave it open for any questions. Yeah, that was a lot of detail. Excellent stuff. What I will say is that um, Microsoft definitely wants to give this money out. Um, they are uh, convinced that if people have exposure to the platform, that they will uh, move to it very rapidly. And so they want partners like us to let customers know that these funds are available and um, and for us to use as much as possible. They, they want to spend the money because, the, and again, they, they think they'll get um, act, uh, customers out of it, and then they'll show that, the, that, that giving that money will get them more customers, they'll give out more money for, for more proofs of concept. Uh, uh, they're, they're really trying to become dominant as the, the most dominant cloud partner, uh, cloud company in the world. And uh, this is one of the vehicles for doing that, is to, to help fund people to understand more about their offering. Thank you, Jack. Uh, that was Jack Adis, uh, CEO, AKA Enterprise Solutions. Uh, we do have a question. Greg, are you ready? Greg, are you still yeah, with us? Yeah, hit me with your best shot. Yes, okay. I am. Sorry, couldn't get myself uh, off mute. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, will I experience downtime if I move GP to Azure? A great question. Um, if it is literally a lift and shift of an existing GP solution, so if you've already got a, a fully working Great plane system running on, on your data center or hosted by somebody else, um, and it is up and running. We can lift and shift that GP environment up into Azure with little to no downtime. I can't say zero because there's obviously network connection time differences, um, but if we do this the right way, it would not be a business impacting event. In other words, an hour transition while we shut down one system and activate another. So you should experience no downtime. If we're talking about doing uh, upgrades of GP at the same time as migrating it, then we need to work with you a little bit to understand what we're upgrading and what we're touching. But our goal is always, and Microsoft's goal is always, to be able to do this with no downtime. Even with an upgrade, you, even with an upgrade, they'll, they'll have, they'll switch from one version and go on to the cloud version. It'll be the newer version that they will have been trained on. And there should be theoretically no downtime in that situation as well. Thank you, Jack. Another question, can your disaster recovery also deal with Linux systems? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Um, with Linux systems, there's a, there's a, it, 
different in the way that you do it for open source than it is for Windows. Obviously, everybody that's been in that environment knows. Uh, with Linux systems, the replication happens um, in a technology term at the virtualization layer as opposed to in the core of the operating system. So we would still be, uh, for lack of a better word, doing it at the host and replicating the environment at a bitwise replication at the data layer of the actual virtual machine itself. That's real technical jargon for, we're gonna make sure that that machine real time is replicating up into Azure. I think the, there's, there's SLAs in there that I can get you afterwards that says exactly what's the latency and data transmission between your live system and what's running inside of Azure. Um, but it's, it's in the order of magnitude of minutes, not in hours. And it comes down to also what's your network bandwidth. If you're sitting on a, on a very solid internet pipe with very solid internet connectivity, that obviously opens up a bigger pipe, it's easier for us to replicate, et cetera. But um, that's my long-winded way of saying, yes, the DR solution operates for Linux much in the same way as, as, as Microsoft from a, an impact in that result. Thank you, Greg. We've got a couple of minutes left. Again, if you think of something after the call, feel free to reach out to your customer success manager. Um, or again, if you're not sure who that is, please reach out to me directly. Any last words, Jack or Greg? No, I thought that Greg was really thorough. <laughs> we through a lot, a lot of stuff. There. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, I think it's really exciting, and um, yeah, I, I think, I think that uh, the, the the amount that that Microsoft is putting into this investment, like I said before, and I, I said their goal is to become the the largest commercial cloud company in the world. I think they probably are already there, uh, but they're really looking to make it. Uh, to, to democratize the cloud and, and to make it as easy as possible for all companies to get there. And so we're happy to be part of that. And, um, and again, I'll, I'll just say just to, to end the, the, the webinar, we wanted to have a, a webinar to talk about uh, the cloud itself. And, you know, when we talked about the theme, I, I came back from a Microsoft conference where I said, look, the theme should probably be how Microsoft and AK will invest in you getting there because it, it really is a lot that they're, they're putting into this. So uh, reducing the migration cost tremendously, if not making it free, uh, I think is a, is a brilliant way for them to get customers use of their platform and understanding the, the power of it. And, and by the way, all the stuff that we showed on, on this, uh, you know, the, the examples that we gave were really, uh, when you looked at that, that, that graph, that, that continuum, still mostly on the left side of that graph, uh, we're putting a lot of, of, of uh, companies onto cloud-based um, data warehouses. Uh, we're, we're on the verge of, of, of releasing a lot of uh, artificial intelligence into the Dynamics 365 applications. Uh, so so the, the right-hand part of that graph is, is, is still to come, uh, but I think there's still a lot to be done on the, uh, on the stuff that we, that we talked about during this call. Great, thank you, Jack. Absolutely. Okay. That concludes today's presentation. Thank you, Greg, and thank you everyone on the line for attending today's webinar, Funding Your Move to the Cloud, How Microsoft and AK Enterprise Solutions Are Investing in Your Digital Transformation. As I mentioned earlier, this webinar was recorded, and you'll be receiving a full email with a link to the recording in the next few business days. Thanks again for your time and attention, and have a great afternoon.